Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I want to talk about solution to this particular problem as well as the other one. Okay. The, these two are related to defilement key exchange. Let's get started. So the first problem is consider the defilement key exchange algorithm, which we talked about a lot uh, throughout this video series. Many, many, many discussions were, uh, were about DH key exchange. Uh, how many discrete logarithm key logarithm instances have to be solved by eavesdropper Eve in order to derive the final shared secret? So we are asked to select one answer out of the four possible answers. I must also tell you at the end that there is no equivalence between solving a Defigelman key exchange problem and uh, solving a discrete log problem. We don't know whether breaking Defigelman means uh, one has to solve uh, a discrete logarithm problem or not. That's a deeper question, but uh, let's assume the only way to solve the Fiegelman is to break the discrete logarithm problem. Um, the question is asking how many instances have to be solved. Okay, so um, let's get it uh, going now. Let's let's quickly recall um, the key exchange, right? Uh, we have our friends Alice and Bob, right? Here is Alice, here is Bob. Uh, what will Alice do as part of um, communication? Um, she first picks her, her private A, right? And Bob uh, picks his private B. These are two numbers, okay? And um, of course, there is some parameter that, that they both agree up front, which is publicly known, uh, is the prime number P, which is usually very, very large prime number, 20, 48 bit, and so on. It, it, it changes uh, time to time, but assume uh, it's a very large prime number P publicly known, everybody knows. And there's another number G, which is called the generator. Everybody knows that as well, publicly known, known usually. Okay, it's coming from this standard or any other equivalent standard. Okay, you, you can also generate your P and G, but that's not usually recommended. Okay, so A and B are basically members of this um, uh, group Z star P, meaning A and B are from one through P minus one, okay? Uh, what is the public key value Alice will send? Let me call this Alice. And this is Bob, right? Okay. So what will Alice send to Bob? Alice will send to Bob G power A, okay? G power A is uh, computed in mod P. So I will not write mod P again and again. So it's G power A in mod P. What about Bob? Bob will send G power uh, B to Alice, okay? And then what Alice will do is she takes her uh, a private A. This is private A. She writes to the... Bob's uh, value. So it's, she will do G power B power A. And uh, what will Bob do? Bob will take uh, G power A that he got from Alice and write it to power B. Because of the rules of exponent, uh, we, we know that these two numbers are same. Okay. G power B power A is same as G power A power B. Okay. That's basically the idea of defilement. That this is the shared key. Um, you have to apply some additional transformation. You don't really use the key K directly to your AES or DES or whatever algorithm you're using. But for this problem, it's 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 okay to just say this is the key. Usually you will apply a HKDF that will convert this key into a uniform key. Uh, but for this problem, don't worry about it, okay? And there are many more things that I am skipping low level details. There are some properties related to G. Um, G has to, to be a, a number that generates a subgroup and so on. Let's assume, um, uh, this is the basic version we are working with, okay? So uh, the question now is, um, from an attacker's perspective, uh, his goal is, of course, to find the key K, right? Because all the messages that are exchanged between Alice and Bob will be encrypted using this key K, using AES, for example, okay? So if, if, if somehow um, eavesdropper can find the value of key K, then, then he, he knows um, everything that's exchanged between Alice and Bob, okay? So how can... Um, Alice, uh, um, uh, how can Eve rather uh, um, uh, find the key K? Well, one possibility is um, he takes, uh, Eve uh, uh, takes G power A and somehow find the A from it, okay? If, uh, if, if uh, she was able to find A from G power A, then Eve is no different from Alice, right? Because Alice also knows A and somehow Alice and Bob were able to come up with the same key K. That means um, it's enough to solve only one instance of a problem, okay? It could be either G power A, uh, from G power A, find the A, or from G power B, find the B, okay? As I uh, mentioned earlier, this is not necessarily the only way to break the field, man. Maybe there are 
other means to find the key value k without solving the discrete logarithm problem, without finding the values of a and b. There may be some mathematical weakness uh, related to g power a, g power b uh, that you could somehow combine uh, to find the value k. Okay, we, we don't know. Um, um, as far as I know, there is no equivalence shown. Um, okay, but in any, in any case, for this problem, we assumed that the only way to break difficult man is to, to um, solve discrete logarithm instances. That's the reason why I start from one, two, three, four, rather from zero. Okay, um, because we don't know. So, um, one seems to be the reasonable answer because you have to solve, uh, you have to find uh, A from G for A or B from G for B. Okay, that's, that's the answer basically for this problem. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. The next problem is also difficult and related problem. So we can use the same picture. All right, let's, uh, let's read through this problem. We are talking about difficult men again. Public parameter P, we already wrote it here. Eve is tricking Alice and Bob to use her G, which is P minus one. Uh -huh. um, we know Alice is key material, right? Private key is A, public key is G for A, because she's sending that. Bob's uh, public key is G for B, private key is B, okay. The question is what are the possible shared keys for this malicious G? G itself is malicious because um, uh, who is giving G? G is giving is, is, a, is generated by uh, Eve, so G is equal to P minus one, okay? So how do we handle that? Um, we can think about it. We can just go here and replace G by P minus one and then answer it easily. Uh, what is the value of uh, P minus one power A, for example? Okay, in mod P. So in mod P, uh, P is zero, right? P because P mod P is zero. So this is same as minus one power A, okay? If uh, A is even, um, the answer will be one. If A is odd, um, the answer will be minus one. Minus one is same as P minus one. So one, if A is uh, even, um, is um, minus one if A is odd, but minus one means uh, P minus one in modular arithmetic. So um, we can say uh, the values are one or minus one, okay? So if G is backdoored by, by uh, Eve, um, the, the only possible values um, uh, you, you can have for K key, key K is either uh, a minus one or uh, one, which means say the one or P minus one, okay? That's all, uh, you cannot get zero, okay? There's no way you can get a zero because uh, there is an interesting reason for that. Um, Z star P, the, the group that I have mentioned here um, is made of numbers from uh, one through P minus one, okay? Um, and it is a group that means uh, a, a group means if you do operations on the group, multiplication operation in this case, uh, you will only get a group element. So zero is not a group element. Therefore, you cannot have zero as a possible key. The key K that you get is, is an element from one through P minus one inclusive. Okay, so, so this cannot be the answer. Okay, and uh, we can easily now um, wrap it up. Um, we can see that the nice answer is here, here. The correct answer is here. It can be either one or P minus one. Okay, that's all. So don't trust a G that comes from arbitrary arbitrary person, right? If, if you are using a G, somebody gives you, they might have put a back door like this and they know the only two possible values of the key K, okay? They know it can be either one or P minus one. All right, that's all. Thank you very much.